What's going on? It's Tuesday night. It's 6.45, and it's time for 6.45. I'm Pastor Broderick. I am the preaching and teaching pastor for the Common of Memphis. So glad that you could join me for this night of study of the word. I pray that tonight we are able to unpack and look at some matters of life that are necessary for us in our context and that help us in our pursuit uh, for God's uh, fulfilled desire for us as Christians and uh, those who uh, he looks to, to disciple and to send out and all that stuff that the Great Commission asks us to do. So before we get started, let me pray us in and we're going to dig right into where we left off last week. Lord God, we love you. We thank you. Now, God, I pray to you. I pray that God in this moment of teaching who you are would become real uh, for those that are listening understanding that God every second spent is valuable to you. Uh, Every minute that we offer, God has purpose and reason. And so God, now we pray that everything we do fulfills its purpose and that everything we say brings forth meaning that brings clarity to those who have questions. It's in Christ's name that we pray, amen, amen. So again, we are back at 645. And as I shared with you last week, We are embarking on a teaching series entitled Pause. Now, pause is important. And before I really get into the creative piece, I just kind of wanted to get into teaching more so than anything with this series. Um, um, But I do have some some interesting, um, more cultural relevant pause moments that I want to deal with um, as it relates to relationships and love. But in this moment, I felt like I needed to really just kind of give us some study on God's word. And um, as I shared last week, um, Paul's is based on uh, just this idea that for me being an old head cassette and CD player, um, just the reality of moments where you hear something. And um, if you're anything like me, words and lyrics matter and you just push pause and you just kind of reflect on and you kind of want to rewind and have them play it back again just so you can make sure you heard what you really heard. And that's the case with our teaching uh, for this week and next week and hopefully bringing all of it to closure um, is the reality that in the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 32, Jesus says something that you cannot ignore. And what he says is, remember Lot's wife. Now we talked about last week, the reality that many of us battle with this charge to our Christian uh, walk with God is a call to look forward, uh, not to look back. Old things are passed away is what the Bible tells us. Uh, Behold, they become new. And the newness happens as long as you and I are looking ahead, uh, looking to the heels which come with our strength. Uh, Because in that perspective, here's what it does uh, in just real relatable conversation with you. Looking to the heels and looking forward does two things. One, It gives you distance between a past that was intended to destroy you, but then it also gives you closure or closeness, I should say, to a future and a promise that only God can give you. But to do that, again, it requires you and me having a perspective that is very forward minded, very forward in its thinking, Uh, not looking to the left nor to the right, as God says, not leaning to your own understanding, but trusting in the Lord and letting him direct your path is a pathway that requires a person's perspective being ahead, not behind. And so when Jesus is talking, In Luke 32, you got to understand that he brings to their attention a woman who really um, is interesting in this way. One, they don't even give you her name. She's just known as Lot's wife. Two, she did something that was so significant that Jesus himself in a conversation said, look, y'all, pay attention to this because this is what happened. And in this woman's life, unfortunately, it was her demise. It was her end. And her ending was not pretty. So now let me put our old man glasses. Because again, I want to give you some context to chapter 17. And then we're going to rewind. So let's look at context for a second. Um, 
In chapter 17, in full context, you got to understand that Jesus is talking about uh, the kingdom of God. And so what he does is he says uh, to this audience of Pharisees um, um, by way of question that they ask, because here's what verse 20 says in chapter 17. So again, let's get some context. So as we talk about the things that actually happened in Lot's, in Lot's wife's narrative, you understand the context of this conversation. And so Luke 17 says this, being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Interesting, right? Just in this part in, in the full context of the conversation. Here is Jesus talking to some Pharisees and he says to them, make sure you don't miss this. Um, the kingdom of heaven is not going to be something that you can say, look. Oh, look over there. That's that's where the movement is or, or that is what God is doing. I, I said this um, early on in the beginning of our new year. You know, everybody was big on 2020. Everybody was talking about 2020 vision and being an old man now and wearing glasses. I realized 2020 ain't all of that in the sense of that you don't get to keep it forever, that that life happens, changes come. And so where you may be 2020 at 10, when you turn my age, that 2020 is, is so far from you. But Jesus says to the Pharisees, these individuals who are familiar with word, familiar with the with the laws, he says to them, understand this. You're not going to be able to say you see the movement. You're not going to be able to put your eyes on what God is doing for you. Be, be careful that you don't look so hard that you become like Lot's wife. Because again, in 2020, everybody going into the new year was talking about, oh, the year of 2020, the vision, the view, the perspective, the eyes are looking, they're seeing. And nobody can honestly say in the 10th month of 2020 that in January of 2020, you saw any of this that's going on right now. None of us can say that we saw the continuous death of, of black men and black women. None of us can say that leadership would take the turns that it took and, and manage and, and, and handle matters of our well-being in life the way that they were handled. None of us can honestly say that. Um, not even the most spiritual individuals uh, prophesied in all of those um, rallies and get togethers that we put together in 2019, that none of them could tell us that this is where God was moving. And so again, it's that danger for you and I that we've got to be careful that we don't get caught up in. And that is thinking that we can see what God is doing. You, you got to be very clear um, because uh, eyes have not seen is what the Bible says. Ears have not heard the things that God is doing. And so if that's our reality, if that's our, if that's our truth, then we got to be careful what we're looking for. Because sometimes it's in what you see that you mess around and miss what God is trying to do. And, and I'm going to let that sit there and you, you ponder that. But be careful of what you're trying to see. Because sometimes your eyes can be focused on the wrong thing. And like Lot's wife, watch this, it could destroy you. And so you, you, you fast forward and you look a little bit deeper into the moment. And, and here's what Jesus says. He, 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 gives this, he gives this narrative. And I'm going to start around, let's see. I'm going to start around verse 28. Jesus says this. No, verse 27. Um, Just as it was in the days of Noah. This is verse 26. In the days of Noah just like it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out, of, out from Sodom, Fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house 
not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Ooh, some good stuff. You're talking about a conversation with some individuals who felt like they knew enough, but they didn't know the word. They didn't even know the word in the flesh. As John would say in chapter one, that he came amongst his own and his own could not comprehend him, couldn't up understand him. And what Jesus is talking about in chapter 17 of the Gospel of Luke is that there's this reality with men, especially men who are not rooted, who are not grounded in the word of God and, and, and connected to the truths of God. They are mess around and be planning and partying and living their best life and mess around and miss the eternal life that's for them. Why? Because they're so busy with what they want to do that they miss what God wants for them. And that's a dangerous place to be. And so Jesus, again, in context, don't miss this. He gives us an opportunity, one in 2020, to look at the people in our proximity that like in Noah's days and like in Lot's days are partying, drinking, building, planting. But there's some stuff that's happening um, and for those that are scared of that, that spiritual realm, that, 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 that Pentecostal dimension that is oftentimes shied away, there's some things that are going on behind the closed doors uh, of the natural ways that we look at life, where God is moving, where God is doing. And what you got to ask yourself is that in this season, am I the one that God is allowing to build the necessary fortified walls, the necessary ark, so that me and mine can go in and be safe? Because what's coming, everybody's not ready for it. And I've, I've said this to some people. I'm, I'm worried about 2020 um, because we don't know what's going to happen after November. But if you look at the signs of the time, you should be very concerned. You should be in a posture of, of for real fervent prayer, asking God to protect you, asking God to show you what it is you should be doing because this thing is gonna get real for a lot of people. And I'm not talking about loss of income and I'm not talking about um, uh, diseases that come and take lives away. I'm talking about some real warfare happening in our, in our day and time. And so Jesus says in context of chapter 17, look, remember the lessons of yesterday because they're there. And again, this audience that he's talking to is very familiar with the two narratives that Jesus gives as an example. And so for you and me, the challenge becomes don't get so confused and get lost that you don't pay attention to the signs of the time that look like, resemble, reflect the days of yesterday. Don't do it to yourself. And so he says now, watch this. He says, like the days of Noah, like the days of Lot, like them. Remember, though, what happened to Lot's wife. And Lot's wife would go through something that you can't ignore, that you can't miss. And because God is God and, and in, his, in his wisdom, he, he says to you and me, don't miss the pillars that I put before you, the lessons that I give you to show you the path in which I don't want you to go. This is why, again, I said it last week in Micah 6 and 8, he can say to man honestly and with all conviction and boldness that um, he has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? And that's where we're going to stay at tonight. There is a way that seems right to man. And that way, according to scripture, leads man to destruction. The way in which God desires for man to walk is to walk humbly. And so you got to ask yourself, am I walking humbly with God? Project, what does humble look like? Humility is a person who, watch this, is not so full of themselves that in the midst of a pandemic, they're not looking to the hills from which cometh their strength. Or they are looking to the hills from which cometh their strength. They're not looking at uh, the foolishness of the land. They're not, uh, they're not compromising the convictions of their faith, but instead they're looking to the hills to get strength, to, to gain understanding of why and what God is doing in this season. So he says to Micah in chapter six, he says, look, tell them that I've shown them, I've given them what it is they need so that they understand what I expect. 
And one of God's expectations is to walk humbly with him. And what the story of Lot's wife shows you is what it looks like to not be humble, to not pay attention to the things that happened around you as you get ready to walk into the promise or the place that God has set aside just for you. And so that's where we are tonight. And so I want to give you a chance to take a look at something real quick. And then we'll come back and we're going to unpack just chapter 18 of Genesis. But I gave you an assignment last week and I asked you to look at both chapter 18 and chapter 19. And so I want to give you a chance to cheat real quick. And I want you to look at chapter 18, verse 17. And I want you to read verse 17. And with yourself, with your group, here's your opportunity to kind of just read and reflect. But here's what God says. He says, the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Real quick, real quick, reflective time. You've read it. Now I want you to reflect on it. And in your own way, I want you to respond to it. Is the word from God in your season of life right now in 2020, a word that lets you know that he's about to bless you in spite of the things around you? Do that for me real quick. And again, take time and write it down. In this season, what is God saying to me? Am I being, is he telling me that I'm blessed? Or is my actions allowing for the curse to be on me? Do that, take a little time, and then we're going to come back and unpack. In this season, are you blessed? That's the question that I want you to reflect on. When you are doing Bible study, when you are in your personal time, always make sure that when you look at scripture and you first read it, always make sure that you reflect on what you read. Don't just read something one time and then move on. Once you've reflected on it, then the next thing I need you to do is respond to it. And your response can come in different ways. Let me make sure you hear me. You can respond through prayer, but you can also respond through journal entry. So when you're studying scripture, remember, four things you should always do. One, read it. Two, reflect on it. Three, respond. And then the final thing for you to do is rest in it. Whatever it is that comes out of your meditation, your prayer, uh, and your studying of God's word. Rest in what God is telling you. Those are four key principles to when you're studying the Bible. And so now, this is, again, that opportunity to exercise what you just read in that moment with me. Because you should have already read 18 and 19 in its full totality, and so now you're just coming back and you're reflecting and you're responding to what was said. So here we go. Watch what he says. Chapter 18, beginning at verse 17. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Question mark. For I have chosen him that he may command his children in his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Stay right there. So here is God declaring in the midst of Abraham's life that there is a way that I've given you, Abraham. There's a way I've shown you to be and to do that way. Watch this is to do righteously in the context that you're in, not to be like anything around you, not to be like anybody around you. And watch this, if you do it, then this righteousness that you live in by faith, I'm going to bless you in your seeds. This is God's word to him. And so what he says though, he asks a question, should I hide though from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that, watch this, regardless to that, I'm a blessing because of his faith. His faith in me and his faith in what I've asked him to do righteously. Should I let him know? And so in this moment with Abraham, you learn that God then begins to unpack what's going on. And watch what God says. And this is, this is the eerie, scary part of chapter 18 of Genesis. 
The Bible says, and then the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So here's God. Watch this. He's talking and he's saying to us, to, to those lear learning, gleaming from the life uh, of those in Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to go down and I'm going to check. I'm going to check it out. See what's going on. Not that I don't know, but I've, I've heard a cry come forward to me. And in this cry, I've got to move accordingly. Now, there's this man that he has relationship with named Abraham. And so now let's do some Sunday school real quick. You understand the story of Abraham is a story where God says to Abraham, get out, get out from where you're from, leave your mama, leave your daddy, leave your family and let's go. And in doing so, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you blessings beyond your, your thinking, your way of grasping uh, what a blessing can be, because understand in Abraham's context, he does not know Jehovah. He does not know Elohim. He does not know Yahweh, that great name that should not be written or spoken, that name that, that everyone in, in the Jewish culture reverences. He didn't know him yet. And this, this was his introduction in the book of Genesis to have faith in a God that he didn't know that simply said to him, get out. This same God would do in the New Testament to, to 12 men the same thing by saying, follow me. He says to Abraham, get out, get out from amongst your people and come with me and let me show you the blessings. Now, in that he brings with him a wife. He brings with him a nephew named Lot. And he begins this journey with God and his nephew, watch this, who was only there by grace, only there by mercy, because of watch this, a relationship that was between God and Abraham. Let me say this to somebody real quick. Some of us are walking in the favor of somebody else whose relationship with God is so deep that it overlooks you for the sake of God loving them. And so many times, though, we act like Lot. Watch what Lot does in the story, in the narrative of Abraham and Lot. When it's time to choose who's going to live where, Lot has the audacity to take the what looked like the best land over the uh, OK land. Now, keep in mind, you are only in this position because of this man who's your uncle. That's the only reason. And, and, and what's funny to me, uh, my friend of mine, Isaac, we, we were just talking about this. What's funny to me, if you think about it this way, we got a little trip that we, we talking about doing. Watch this. That's like a person going on vacation with you, right? And you pay the bulk of the, for the, you pay the bulk of the uh, room rate, right? Now you just bringing them along because they cool with you. I want you to hang out with me. You carry yourself, you know, you take care of your food and all of that, but you gonna come in this thing with me. I done did the work, I done scouted it out, I done found, I done put in on the taxes, all of that stuff. I've done more than you've done. That's like a person traveling with you and telling you they gonna take the king size VIP room and you take the double bedded room. You looking at them like, how dare you? How dare you say to me, the person who done paid the most, the one who is the reason why you here, and that's the, that's the thing. The reason Lot is even in this position to choose is because his uncle's relationship with God. And he has the audacity in his entitled, ungrateful spirit to say, give me over there by Sodom and Gomorrah, because it looks better. And so one of the things you got to remember as we talk about Lot's wife is that it didn't come on its own. She got it honestly because the man she laid with was always caught up in what he saw. He was always attracted to this place. Watch this. That was never in God's eyes the place that he would want anybody to be because that place went against everything that was of God. 
While they may have looked on the surface to be doing big things, the reality is that big things was causing a big problem between them and God. And again, a lesson for somebody watching this is that are you doing some big things, but you and your big things are causing issue between you and God. And if you are all that you're building, do you not realize that at the blink of an eye, at the drop of a, of a hat, God can take it out, can remove it from you and you no longer have it. And what you don't want to do is be so in it that it destroys you in the process. Huh. God says, though, to Abraham in, in chapter 18, I, 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 I know the cry that I hear and I, I'm just going down to verify, validate it. You know, and it's like that. It's like that person who, who works in IT and they they got all of their screens in front of them. And, you know, they get the notifications of all the stuff that's wrong and they just come down on the floor to look at the system, but they already know because of what's on screen, what's wrong. And you sitting there on your, you know, at your, your station, and you think they just about to find out what you gonna find out. No, they already knew, and that's where a lot of us need to understand. The things that are wrong in the world, the things that bring uh, God to a place of, of hurt and, and regret are, are always and have always been known to God. It's just he allows you to come into this moment, to come into this experience. Why? So that you can see it, but at the same time so that he can learn from it, so that he can bring you from it. Because again, if I'm trying to get you away from something, I need to show you what I need you to stay away from. And what God did not need was a lot to be in this place that was ready to be destroyed. Why? Because choices have been made. But now, don't forget Lot's wife. She is in all of this, this place that God says is crying out to me for me to do something. Do something, God, because these folks then lost it. Do something, God. It's cried out to God, and she has had to sit in the midst of it. Now, let's fast forward the narrative. While sitting in it, God sends out the scouting team to check it out, finds the corruption, that's there, sees, the, sees the, uh, the gross mentalities and behaviors of the men and, 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 and whatnot, sees the compromising position that Lot sits in um, to where he's willing to do whatever, however, just to stay in good graces with everybody. And again, that's that lesson that you gotta learn in this story about Lot's wife is that not only was she stuck with a man or with a man who had a perspective problem. She was also with somebody who was quick to compromise and stand in righteous conviction. See, you gotta be careful in relationship with people and here's where the charge comes. Watch this, if God created husband and wife uh, to walk humbly with him, uh, to do justly, then when one of them is not doing that, then they're outside the will of God. Now, they can spend money on each other all day, but if the walk with God is not humble, then something's wrong. And see, what we think culturally, though, is that, oh, they got this and they got this and it's good marriage. No. Are they walking humbly with God? Are they doing justly with God? Because I say this to people all the time when I do counseling and marriage. What good is your marriage if you and this person are not doing or fulfilling the Great Commission? You and this person sharing all this love together and God didn't give you all that love just to share with that one, but that that love should be shared with other people. People who need to know God's love. That, that's a whole nother conversation. And so here they are though, Lot's wife, amongst a man whose perspective was always off, a man who was by grace in the position he was in. She watched him put before, right in front of her and in front of the men, the, the, the men of God. She watches him be willing to compromise their children. She watches, watch this, her, his own son-in-laws not believe enough in him, in the God who was trying to save him, to follow him. And that's a whole nother conversation. But pay attention now to who she has to follow. And if I'm husband and wife, and watch this as, my, as your wife, if I'm looking at you and I don't see the strength of God that I'm supposed to see, then I got issue with you. And you can see the issue is there 
when you see it played out in the other people in his lives. Nobody respected him. Nobody took what he said too serious. And so when Jesus says all of this partying is going on and this woman is a uh, casualty of war in many senses, because again, she's there and she's watching a husband who is being given mercy and a great amount of grace because watch this, God allows him to escape this tragedy that really should have been on him just as much as it was the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. And because she was affiliated, associated with him, watch this, the consequences also was gonna fall on her. And so one of the lessons in Lot's wife's life is realizing that when God makes, uh, when God makes way for you to come out of something, don't you hesitate. Don't you play around too long because you'll mess around and be destroyed because of it. And then watch this. Don't allow for bad leadership to be the thing that kills you when God is still giving you the opportunity to escape. Because go back to scripture. I give you this day. It's on you. And what you can't do in your conversation with God is say to God, well, I was listening and I was watching him. And, you know, he he told the men of Sodom that, you know, they could have my daughters. And so I just figured since he was a compromiser, I could compromise, too. Or, you know, God, you said a lot to him. But I mean, I figured it wasn't that bad. So I went ahead and I looked back. All of these ways that we in our own downplay are a dangerous thing. And so what this story teaches you in the complete narrative is that if you are not paying attention, listening to what God is saying, listening to what God is saying, and then watch this and what he's saying, having the faith in what he says and in the faith walking in it and not being willing to compromise it. That's the challenge. Because what chapter 18 says to you and me is that there was enough bad going on that God was done. And when you fast forward and you go a little further down, you learn this about Abraham. Watch this. It was bad enough that his nephew felt entitled to the better part. But then his nephew and his, and his wife didn't even know this probably. But watch this. The Bible says that Abraham in chapter 18 beginning around verse 22, but in particular for us, verse 28, it says, Abraham says, uh, suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? Now this story is good, y'all. Here is this man literally interceding on behalf of his nephew, family, and just individuals like God, look, I know it's bad because watch this. God's problem is what's what's in and around Sodom and Gomorrah. And his plan is to destroy anything that's in and around it because it ain't no good, which then suggests to you and me that there was nothing good about Abraham. I mean, Lot and his wife, nothing. But Abraham being in the position he was in was able to intercede and he started running the numbers with God. Well, what if it's only five? What if it's one? What if it's all it is was being done? And for a lot of us, the lesson to take from that is don't neglect the intercession that has happened in your life through Jesus Christ. An intercession that said to God, well, what if just, you know, what if they only had? What if they could only do? Would you cover them? Would you let me keep them? Would you allow them for nothing to let, uh, take them out of my hand? And God says to Abraham, like he said to Christ, yeah, I will. Because he's that good of a God. He's that merciful of a God. And God was literally so merciful. But again, Lot's wife and Lot missed all of this. Why? Because they didn't have the same relationship that Abraham had. Remember that about Lot's wife. They weren't, the, they weren't in relationship with God as Abraham was. And so they received experience. They got exposure with God from a distance which for you and I is a lesson that says I need to be working to get closer to God because the closer I am to God, watch this, the clearer God is to me. But watch this, it's not in what I see. It's in the word that I hear from him. Faith comes by hearing 
And so the point for tonight is too many of us want to look back or look at things as if by looking we'll be able to see God. And you can't put God in a box like that. Remember, everything was good according to Jesus. In chapter 17, 17, they were partying, they were getting married, they were planting, they were building. That, that's all good for the community. That's all great stimulus for the, for the society. But there was something ongoing, something else was happening with God that because of relationship Abraham was aware of and Lot and his wife wasn't. And so I want you to look at that. Because again, that's the part about Lot's wife you need to remember is that she was connected to a person who was willing to compromise and who had bad perspective. But she also failed to realize that she was not in close proximity with the one who could, was responsible for delivering her from an end that was inevitable. And you got to ask yourself, is that where I'm at? Am I that person? Because a lot of us are and we don't even realize it. Let's stop there tonight. I'm gonna put the brakes there. Your homework is to continue reading Genesis 18 and 19, because that's where we're gonna stay as we bring all of this to a close next week. Let me pray for us. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we thank you. Now God, as we prepare to leave here, we pray, God, that you would lead us. Lead us according to your word, lead us according to your scripture. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Amen. Catch y'all later.